Well, greetings again, everyone. Nick Mikelak and the marvelous Steve Fraser. Oh, Mar I, I love that you always come up with a new adjective for yes. me. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> greetings. And uh, <laughs> today we're doing a commentary for Clive Barker's Candyman. Sure, sure. Yeah. Candyman. The Candyman. Candyman. <laughs> Candyman. Oh, oh, you're saying it. No, don't do it. Oh, Wait, oh. isn't it just three? It's I think five. It, oh, it is five. Five, okay. I thought it was three. Oh. We don't want to get I, slaughtered. Didn't I just watch this? We I don't want to get slaughtered through halfway through the commentary, so we'll hold <laughs> off. Anyway, guys, you can sync up your timestamp to zero. We'll give you a little countdown to sync up. Get your subtitles on if you have them. Yep, Help always you follow key. along nice and easy. So, guys, in three, two, one, play. Okay. Who can take a sunrise? <laughs> sprinkle it with dew. Oh, wait, that's not what the Candyman we're doing? <laughs> not that Candyman. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say we've got this intro thing down to a science now. It took us took us about forty of these to get it figured out, but we got it. Little TriStar pictures. Don't see much TriStar anymore. No. It's all under the Sony umbrella, I believe. Oh, yeah. A polygram. Yeah. Ben Polygram was yeah. doing movies, propaganda films. Yeah. Um. And no, th this is just a theatrical version. Apparently, the new Screen Factory one has a slightly extended version on it. It's slightly unrated, but. It's it's like a few seconds cut and then a few seconds added back in, so I don't know I don't know much about it, but we're watching old DVD theatrical cut. <clears throat> Virginia Madsen, Tony Todd, and the Great City of Chicago. Oh, Virginia Madsen, I I think she's a phenomenal actress. Xander Berkeley also. Zan been. Xander's good. Virginia Virginia's had a lot of really good performances in fairly unremarkable films like Highlander Two, <laughs> Dune, so. <laughs> But she's great. She's, she's she's beautiful. She's a fantastic actress. She's still great today. Her first uh, Clive Barker commentary. Is it really? Yes. We haven't done no Hell Hellraiser yet. Well, maybe one day. Uh, yeah, I mean maybe Hell, Hellraiser. Day. The first Hellraiser. I mean, it's kind of weird, but yeah. But I mean, it, as a standalone movie, it's pretty good. We could do. Th we could get to three. Three is fucking batshit. <laughs> we we always like the bat shit. Oh yeah, that one. Um, I always like these over the head or overhead shots, yeah. tracking shots. Yeah. Um. And I just, I really just love the city of Chicago. Oh yeah. Which is why I always loved this movie as a kid, uh -huh. um, even though it didn't really make a lot of sense, and it still <laughs> doesn't. Um, but you know, whatever. The bees. The bees. The bees. <laughs> the cage. <laughs> the quicker man. We, we, we touched on a little Tony Todd in our final destination, which we just wrapped up and everything. We love him. Yeah, t Tony Todd's one awesome. The, one of the greatest fucking voices out there, man. Grown to gullet. Whoa. Oh. Bees. Making that oh good Christ! Yeah. This is the John Hancock building. Oh yeah. Um, very uh, very famous Chicago landmark. Yeah. Um, this is the building uh, that Chris Farley died in. Oh okay. Um, yeah, there are there was, are condos in there. I was sitting in, in the class when that that news hit. Not to bring everybody down right yeah. at the beginning of the show here, but. <laughs> <clears throat> She really is stunning, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She's a sister of Michael Madsen. Right, right. And how two, how different are those two oh, personalities? Geez. This is Ted Raimi, <clears throat> brother of Sam Raimi. I don't think he ever intended to be an actor, but he just kept falling into roles, I think, and just decided, hey, why not? This is, uh, you know... He, he thinks he's going to get some. Oh, yeah. And she's like, wait, no, we're going to do the uh, urban legend oh, yeah. shtick here. She, she, wants, she wants a little... Get a little scared and uh, get, get a, little, get a little tingle going. Like, you know, um, yeah. scary after scary movie sex is better than, <laughs> you know, just regular sex, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> he's like, I'll do whatever you want as long as I can take that bra off. Yeah, uh -huh. <clears throat> she's on. She's looking all right too. I could do without that cross around her neck, but yeah. that's just a personal <laughs> preference. 
There he's, he's getting a little excited. Oh here. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> nope, not gonna do it, are you? She thinks he's a chicken shit. Oh, it is five. Yeah, yeah. Not that I didn't believe you. Oh but. yeah. The Bloody Mary thing, I think, is three. Oh, that's so, what I was thinking. So I think, of. That, I think okay. that's that's the misconfusion. That could be. Nice wood mallard duck on the table yeah. there and a yeah, says, striped couch with a floral pillow. <laughs> Another mallard duck up behind. Look at them dishes. Double duck. <laughs> and then That's a great effect there. With the that is a great effect and the blood coming through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. That boy looks like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> that woman looks like a boy. <laughs> uh, I kid, people. I kid. Mm -hmm. do, do not send your hate tweets <laughs> my way. <laughs> oh. Look at the hair on this dude. That's a little progressive for what? What was this? Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Yeah. Ninety-two. Ninety-three. It's 92 in America, about October 92 in America, and about like five months later in the UK, so depending on where you are. <clears throat> yeah, but that's a very late 90s haircut out of this young man. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, he's got boy band written all over him. <laughs> now that smirk, though, that's a, that's a creeper smirk. I like that she's just smoking a, oh, yeah. smoking a cig here. Yeah. I don't get that no more. <clears throat> this is oh, I was just gonna say. I U think this I. is UIC yeah. Chicago, or you? Yeah, UIC. And then they went and put it right there. There's the uh, Hancock again. I believe that was the Sears Tower. Okay. They're both black and big. They are black and big. <laughs> Sometimes it's um, hard. To tell. The. Uh, Sears you know? is Sears is bigger and blacker. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Tony Todd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I mean, this, Xander, this, 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 go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Go for uh, it. Xander Berkeley was in one of the movies we covered already, right? It was a uh, was it Die Hard? No. Oh. I feel like he was in something that we. We've watched. I don't know. I know he spent a good time, uh, or a couple, two, three years on uh, 24, mm. um, where he met his wife okay. um, on the show 24. Mm. But what was he in? Uh, he, I mean, he's been in a hundred well, yeah, things. I mean, but... he's in heat for like a, a minute there with okay. Al Pacino there. He's sleeping with Pacino's wife. Oh, right. <laughs> right. You don't get to watch my fucking TV. God damn it! That's a, that is a mutual. It got a Packers scarf on. I like that yeah. in Chicago. Um, I, I that's and, one uh, of our, our mutual favorite films of all time. Yeah, um, and because uh, uh, before he he used that script to make L.A. Take Down a TV movie, and he played the character of Wayne Grow in that. Oh, so that's checked in as Jameson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So a little, little connective tissue there. I like it. Yeah, I can't, th I can't think of anything he might have been in that we've covered. I don't remember talking about him before. I swear, but maybe maybe I'm just... I, because he's been in so many things that yeah. I'm getting it confused. Um, <clears throat> so, he is a professor, mm -hmm. and she is a student? Or she's just his Maybe a spouse? grad student or something? Because I know that she's like doing the research yeah. on the urban legend. Yeah. Thing, but he's clearly teaching a class on urban oh, legend, right. so. I see. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's a little, little conflict there. Con right. Right. There's the wife. Okay. <laughs> I like it. So now we have at least something to wedge yeah. between them. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at this old school yeah. computer programming here. Old word processor. Would have been about the time I was in junior high <laughs> starting to learn computers. Yeah. Or having a class on it or something like that. 
yeah. Nice little trivia that, for me anyway, that uh, when I was taking that computer class, I had eye strain, so it was like for a little while I actually had to wear glasses. Oh, really? Mm hmm Then they got broken. I never wore them again. I was fine. <laughs> oh, well. Really? I'm the only one in my family that doesn't have to wear glasses. So you just don't need them now? Well, it was more for, more to work against the eye strain. Oh, the, I got gotcha. you. Okay. For the CRT compu computer monitor. I see. Anyway. So now she's tipping her off to Cabrini Green. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Which, which no longer exists, correct? That is correct. They got rid of all that yeah. shit. Yeah. That was cl close on the south side, right? Uh, actually, no. Uh -huh. It was... No, it was actually more north. Okay. Um... So I heard talking about I never really got the geography where they were. Sure. So UIC is just south of like the loop. Mm -hmm. And Cabrini is, if I recall correctly, was further north. Um, okay. Oh, Ruth and Jean. Ruth and Jean. <laughs> <clears throat> Those southern folks always oh, have yeah. to have two, two yeah. names. Two it's always two names. Yeah. <laughs> Guy was coming through the walls. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> eviscerated, I believe, yes. is the word that she is not educated <laughs> enough to know. Um, so, as a skeptic, I could see her saying, oh, yeah. you know, this it's in the project, some lady got slashed yeah. up and yeah. like what is that that doesn't prove and then everyone starts to run the legend and whatnot <clears throat> right that doesn't prove it's old, anything it's old uh, folklore it's old sort of uh spook story put your kid to sleep or whatnot right you go go off the rails and any man's gonna find you or something she's researching uh newspaper articles mm -hmm. here from the chicago dispatch which is not a real newspaper but it's in the same font as the chicago tribune which yeah. is one of the like most famous newspapers in the world mm -hmm. i don't know if this was filmed at the uic this is uic no. i don't know if um i don't know if that was filmed in the actual library there i imagine with all of this mm -hmm. you know on location stuff maybe they would have just used i can't imagine them like, yeah. using a sound stage or a yeah i think pretty much all this was shot on location what killed ruthie jean this uh gal here on the right yeah. in the blue looks familiar and i can't place i think i might know where she's from give me a sec i don't know if you've you've seen the film i'm thinking but give me a, give me a minute to check. okay It's Bernadette, right? Um, is, Bernadette? That, is that her name? Bernadette? Da, 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 da. I think so. How does she not understand uh, that, that they don't look the same? Okay. So, yeah, this. So, what I know of. More for most is the Jean Claude Van Damme film Hard Target, but she was in Silence of the Lambs. Oh. And she was in uh, Vampire's Kiss, a whole bunch of TV stuff. She was on ER a little bit. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I think it's just one episode, but she was on there. So, the idea is that this floor plan was made out of either the housing project copied her floor plan or her floor plan copied the housing project, mm. one of the two. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> she is 
kind of proving how mm -hmm. one could go, quote, unquote, yeah. through the walls. Yeah. And sneak in the adjacent apartment and just murder. Yeah. Crawl through. I like that she just researched by pulling her medicine cabinet off the wall. <laughs> like, who says, oh, I wonder if this comes off the wall? And then I just yank on it for a yeah. while. And what's with the creepy mask with the Cyrano de Bergerac <laughs> nose there? Oh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> and they can't do it. Oh, wait. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So it does kind of... I don't know. Because mm -hmm. him not showing up now lends you to go... It goes with her theory that it's not an actual thing. It's, it's just a, a folktale. It's right. Just superstition. <clears throat> Oh, Trevor. Trevor's not here, honey. <laughs> now, now he's here. He's dicking around. Yeah. Dicking around is a great, <laughs> accurate phrase for, <laughs> for what he yeah. was doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me dick around. The second guy in this film thinks... Uh, a little, little, little scared tactics and tactics gonna get him something. I think. I don't know. Just. I don't know. The, uh, yeah, I can't imagine that really being a a useful option. Yeah. Or tactic. I, I've always loved these overhead mm -hmm. shots, which I assume like helicopter or is that. I'm sure it would be. Today, it, today it might be a drone. Drone, but yeah. <clears throat> I feel like helicopters kind of. Yeah standard issue for back then yeah so yes that is bernadette officially <laughs> yes uh, yeah that's the actress i thought she was the gangs are really bad so cabrini green oh, yeah. was a like a housing project yeah. for super low income yeah um and I mean, it was scary, scary times. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's as, as bad as you can imagine with, with the crime and the poverty, all that type of stuff. It's like, it, I mean, yeah, you're giving people a place to stay, but then you create a culture of just drugs and crime and all this type of stuff. So it's almost like you're, you're containing a problem and pushing it off to the side. And I can only imagine that was one of the things they were kind of pushing forward to, to get rid of it. Right. Let's right. get these people a little bit more into a, a real community instead of kind of condensing them, pushing them off in this little area and not giving a shit. Because cops probably ain't showing up around here for for anything. Well, not, yes, yes and no. Yes I mean, and no, but I mean not not as much as in certain other areas. Right. And I mean, I mean even just looking at it, you kind of go. Uh, I don't. Want, I don't want to be anywhere near this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and these are, this is actually Cabrini Green. Yeah, yeah. Um, were... <laughs> this is filming on location. And from what I understand, um, I thought I had read somewhere yeah. that they had uh, just used actual, like, gang game, members. Game. Yeah, and, I imagine so. I you mean, know, various. I mean, it's one way to kind of make sure that they, they don't go ahead and start sabotaging things, employ them on the whole thing, right. pay, them, pay them something for it, because then, then it's more like they're part of it and they're not going to fuck it over. Right. Like, I think all of these people are actual residents yeah. of this building. Yeah, I don't know if this is actual wardrobe, but you can tell they're all wearing the same colors. Right. That's very gang. Very gang. And these two are just exceptionally overdressed for this area. They stand out <laughs> like a goddamn sore thumb. Just just from a hairstyle alone. They, they belong 20 miles away from here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone just assumes that they're and cops. Cops. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who else shows up around here that doesn't belong? Right. Who would go there voluntarily? <laughs> yeah. Right. Five zero. Yeah. Let's just announce it. That 
that might actually be a good thing to have is or uh you know it might be good for them to have the residents think yeah, that they're cops. Yeah, give them a little broad space or something like that. They're not going to, at least not yet, try to jump them and do something to them. Right. That's, that's someone else's agenda later on. Some some of this graffiti is pretty spectacular, actually. Some of it is clearly just, you know, yeah. writing for the sake of writing. But, yeah. Well, yeah, um, well, this this is clearly, obviously, uh, art direction, because sweets to the sweet type of thing, which is part of the... The lore and everything. But I'm sure they probably they probably sought people out in the neighborhood that did this stuff and paid them to do right. it for the film. Right. Because so. this this here looks like a set. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's funny how Coca Cola bottle at the yeah. bottom there. Well, nothing <laughs> but the best for Cabrini Green. <laughs> You're not gonna be drinking that tab shit that Ben <laughs> try to try to suck down himself. Tab cola is some of the worst soda pop <laughs> I've ever put in my mouth. <laughs> it's a diet cola, but it's worse than every diet cola you've ever had. <laughs> so she really has a lot of balls here. Yeah. To be snooping around and yeah, in this vacant yeah. apartment that somebody perished in. Yeah. Although odds are likely somebody is perishing in one other apartment, yeah, current, yeah. like at the same yeah. time. <laughs> Someone's ODing or bleeding out or some right. gross thing somewhere. And I love the old school camera. Ah, uh, yeah. He didn't even try to hide it, did he? He just <laughs> cut right through the... Bitch, where are you going? <laughs> You're going to do what now? <laughs> <laughs> I am left in this scenario here. Yeah. I am not Virginia Madsen. Yeah, no, you're not. No, I'm... I can if I can see Cabrini Green from the L tracks, I'm too close. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, and I believe there was one one L train that you could see it from. No, nah, I'm sure. But uh, man, I wouldn't even want to like if I was going yeah. there. I certainly wouldn't wear a pants suit. No, nah, wear some wear some beat up jeans or some shit. I do like the idea of it being dark yeah. and her having to, you know, shoot film and then not really be able to see what's yeah. what it is until the film develops. Yeah. Like that's kind of a fun thing. Yeah. And again something that's lost on today's generation. Yeah. You know, the whole idea of using up a camera and then taking the the film to the yeah. Walgreens and having yeah. them develop it and get it back to you 3 days later. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're old. Yeah. I think I knew somebody that had that coat <laughs> with the white little speckles on it. There's no doors, there's just holes. Oh. Holes in the wall. What a great visual that is, yeah. isn't it? I mean, all right. What we're twenty five minutes in, yeah. twenty four minutes in. Um, what what are you thinking? Is it not what you remembered? Is it? It's about what I remembered. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a slow start. It's very very slow. Yeah, that's the one thing. Like she's clearly our main character. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. And you know, unlike some of the movies we've watched recently, where we didn't really know who the story was about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, the old razor blade and the candy trick. <laughs> which never happened, ever. Except in Halloween 2. <laughs> oh my god. So, I mean, at least we know we have a main character. Yeah. 
we have an objective. She wants to prove or disprove the theory of Candyman's existence. Yeah. Helen. Mm-hmm. There's a name that nobody's named anybody since the late 70s. Mm-hmm. What are you doing in there? <laughs> I, she's almost like a... Well, I mean, journalists have this thing where mm. they basically have no... They have all balls. Yeah. And they don't care what the, what the person is yelling at them. It's just <laughs> always a quest for more information. Yeah. Like, let's follow her into her apartment. And <laughs> yeah, more more courage than sense in a certain yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who just walks into somebody's apartment? After that person says, you can't be here. Yeah. Yeah, this definitely feels like a set. This feels like a set. Yeah. Um, it's extremely well dressed, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not dirty enough. It's it's not dingy enough. Well, yeah, but yeah. you kind of get the impression that they're based on her character that yeah. there are some people who are just trying to survive and live right, their life. Right. I'm just saying it. It looks the inside, right? It, overly pristine. It looks well kept. Yeah. Um. At least as far as the walls, you know, yeah. are painted. Yeah. Can you imagine raising a baby in Oof. a situation like this? A baby who is almost 30 <laughs> as we sit here today? <laughs> Like, can you imagine being that boy? <laughs> like, he was like, oh, I was in Candyman. <laughs> you were? <laughs> Who are you in Candyman? <laughs> oh, the infant. <laughs> 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 I was a child actor. <laughs> I wonder if it's, like, her kid. Like, in real life. Oh. You know what I mean? Actress's kid? Yeah. Or just somebody on set. Like, oh, I got a baby. 50-50 chance. I mean, it's less paperwork that way, right? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Does a baby need an agent? <laughs> These are the things I think of, people. You see how my mind works? <laughs> I'd, I'd have to talk with my friend Chris to find that stuff out. He knows this shit. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, Chris, uh, yeah, I know Chris. Yeah, yeah, Agos. Yeah, he's on a lot of Chicago shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so she's telling the story here of the guy yeah. coming through the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> Cover it in chocolate <laughs> and a miracle or two. Yeah. The candy man. I, mean, I think I, I think I feel in a way that they, they spend maybe... This guy's got a British beefcake... Oh, yeah, over he's here. got that going on. <laughs> Go ahead. But I, I, th I think I kind of feel like they, they spend almost too much time setting it up. A little bit. Because they keep talking about Candyman, talking about the the lore, talking about all this stuff. We don't see Candyman doing anything. He, he doesn't. I don't think he comes into the film for like another 15 minutes at least. The midpoint? Almost halfway through the film. Because we got the whole sequence where she ends up going back. She gets attacked by the guys in the in the the bathroom. Then she gets hospitalized. Then she gets discharged. Then that's when Candyman shows up. So it's halfway through the alert, film. Spoiler alert! You prick. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. It is. It's a while yet. Yeah. What is he wearing? <laughs> Candyman. Oh. oh. British. Yeah.
He looks like uh, <laughs> Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Slap him on a, on a dollar bill somewhere. He needs a pair of spectacles, and he's All Ben right. Franklin. <laughs> And this guy just knows all about it. Oh yeah, he said you wrote a ten, you did all this research ten years ago. Like everything you everything you're researching, I already did it ten years ago. Why why you're writing a paper on it? That's what he's asking. And now, we're just getting like exposition. We're getting the the background of where he where Candyman came from. Well, according to him. According to him. Like, this is kind of. I don't know. In a in a movie that is predicated on folklore. Uh huh. Him telling this story is just as easily folklore. Yeah, as anything else. Right. Like, why do I, as an audience member, believe what he's saying right yeah. now? Yeah. And maybe we're supposed to. Yeah. But why should we? Yeah. How do you know it was rusty? <laughs> were you there, sir? <laughs> Like, is there, were there eyewitnesses? Nearby there was an apiary? How nearby is nearby? <laughs> Next door? Why is there a beehive in Cabrini Green? There right. isn't! It's weird, when they do the sequel, they, they move the entire lore down to New Orleans. It never happens in Chicago. The whole movie's based on Cabrini Green. Right. So she did go back. Yeah. She took my advice. She put on some denim this time. That's so right. The, so so the, the nice suit. Well, yeah. You don't want to get your suit dirty. No. <clears throat> I love Rottweiler. <laughs> Until it rips your throat out. Jake. <clears throat> His name ain't Jake. Nah. Maybe in 93 it was Jake. I don't nah. know. Oh, I think you know something, kid. <laughs> See, here's another, like, mm. this doesn't hold up well because strangers, like, this kid wouldn't talk to no. some strange woman. No. In strange white woman. Especially when everyone else around here thinks it's a cop. You ain't, you ain't gonna walk around with talking with a strange person that everyone thinks is gonna rat out on you, narc on you or some sure. shit. No, you're not, you're not doing that. I do buy that this kid is just hanging out by himself and oh, yeah. is not, you know, potentially being neglected by... Right. He's a healthy looking kid. Kids are very honest, though. Uh -huh. So this is kind of smart on her part. Yeah. He done trick that kid, or she done trick that kid, excuse me. Yeah. Cobra, it says on there. Cobra. Uh, that's a fucking shot right there. Right, so we are looking southeast at the moment. Yeah. Because if you, as they pan across here. Oh, now, now we're actually looking, I think, due.
due east. Yeah. So maybe it was kind of straight out. But it wasn't on the south side. Yeah, okay. Well, of course he did. <laughs> oh, he's a good storyteller, this kid. This is the big tough guy. <laughs> I always love the, uh, oh, worse than murder. Um, <laughs> rated R for violence and gore, according to the title card. <laughs> They cut off his dick? <laughs> oh, shit. Who cuts off the dick of a kid? <laughs> I mean, you know, if a guy's sleeping around, dicking around on his wife, <laughs> then you cut off his dick. <laughs> I mean, the line, can't fix that, better off dead, <laughs> is a great line. <laughs> and I agree, kid, although, how does he know? I just, he doesn't know what that little uh, thing's for. It's John Wayne Bobbitt about that shit. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it was about this time. Yeah, I guess it was. Uh -huh. It was. He wasn't watching this movie. No. Sweets to the Sweet, written in poop. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I think that's poop. Oh. Yeah, well, I wouldn't touch that door for... Oh, she's wearing an isotoner glove. <laughs> an isotoner. Dan Marino isotoner glove. Can you imagine the smell? Look at it. It's chunky poop. Oh. I mean, this is like... Oh, yeah. That's... that's. I mean, how many days worth of poop is that? Oh, God. Like, that's not one that's... day. <laughs> Look at that. It's so much poop. Oh, God. <laughs> And someone had it's to, got, it's got a little someone nuts had to get in there and, acorns and, and, uh, <laughs> acorns. Someone, someone had to get in there and just smear it around we go. right oh now see that's a cool visual yeah <laughs> that's a cool visual yeah I always like when things are shot at the eye level of a child uh -huh. <laughs> I was just <laughs> here taking pictures of the poop wall. <laughs> so now we have another guy <laughs> with a hook. Yeah. Which is supposed to make us think that then Candyman still isn't real? That it yeah. could, could be this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are we... But... It, it, but... On paper, it works. I don't think in execution it works quite so well. Because, like, are we been waiting here for ha almost 40 minutes for some gangster thug with a hook to show up? Is that the whole movie? No. No one's buying into that. Yeah, like, as an audience member, am I supposed to think, oh, maybe that's Candyman? Yeah. yeah I love a lineup. <laughs> I love a lineup where you gotta read a line. <laughs> give me the keys, you fucking cocksucker. That's right. Give, <laughs> give me the keys, you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> give me the keys, cocksucker. <laughs> I flipped you. I flipped you. I flipped you. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, him. That's a shiner indeed. Look at that. That's a great makeup. Hey, you're looking for Candyman, bitch. But he had a hook. What, what, he didn't use the hook for anything? 
He hit her in the head with it. Oh, well, you don't need a hook for that. Well, it's a, you know, metal implement. Good well, work. I'm just saying, you got a hook. You, 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 you use, use the pointy end, right? You use the pointy end. <laughs> Otherwise, you smack a bitch around the dick. <laughs> right. Like, oh, she just got <laughs> Tina Turner, and she didn't get... Oh, God. <laughs> See, if Ike Turner showed up, then I'd be re- fucking, that's Candyman right, bitch. Right, that's Candyman bitch. Right. Goddamn. But now he just... So the overlord guy who walked around with a hook, killed Ruthie Jean, <laughs> cut the dick off a kid. <laughs> Roll credits, because there's no Candyman. Yeah. And we're 40 minutes in. You're yeah. right. Tony Todd appears at the midpoint of this movie. Yeah, this movie's no good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it just, and like like it, I'm, I'm, there's still good stuff to come in the film. I'm gonna say that but, it has great but, beats, but it feels like they're just it's it, it just just a an, an odd setup and a false payoff, and then then the film starts. The film really doesn't start until Tony Todd shows up. I think this could have been a short film. Well, well, it was a short story, so that goes to show you a little bit of something there. Yeah, but so is the Shawshank Redemption. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, the greatest movie ever Ooh, made. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's, some, some stories have enough potential for expansion. Some, some don't quite work if you expand them too much. Right. And not Shorts, that, you mean? Short shorts. stories? Yeah, short okay. stories. Right. What kind of art is this on the on the wall? Uh, uh, uh. Take a look at the entertainment center down there. Oh yeah, you were looking at them. Yeah. The movies. That old look, TV. Look at the stereo. You got a laser disc player down there, man. Come on. You did they have one? I don't know. Oh, I'm, you wondering, were asking. I'm wondering. I'm you wondering. I'm wondering. I don't know. Who puts bread in a basket? Thought I had one. Oh, bloodshot. No, that's the terribly good effect. Let me just it looks it okay, though. I mean, yeah. it looks it looks pretty... Yeah. And why was she happy to see him? Because, of, other than the fact that he's her husband? Yeah. What's well, the scene that doesn't achieve anything? Right. Like, what was the point of all of it that? It just gets him back in the film for ten seconds. This is kind of a cool. Um, I I think this is still there I, at mm. UIC. Mm. I've only been to UIC twice. Okay. And I don't recall ever going to that little area. Yeah, concourse. See, people today will never know this struggle. Yeah. Just worried about their SD cards. <laughs> uh oh. You can't say that. <laughs> you can't be excited about something and then say, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> that just doesn't fly in a horror movie. <laughs> there we go. About time. She is really excited. <laughs> Would she still have the sunglasses on at this point? I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> oftentimes, in the st- structure of a screenplay, yes. um, when you have a midpoint, um, it isn't necessarily just, well, it's, it's not just the mathematical middle, <laughs> but there is a turning point. A turning point, right. Yeah. So, it could be 
you know, objective completed and move on to new objective. Yeah. That's a possibility. Yeah. Um, in this case, it is uh, non-believer turns believer. Yeah. And yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, which then creates a whole new set of variables. Variables for the rest of Act Two. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. You're right. Like it's so drawn out that yeah. Because, because take, this should have been the the about fifteen twenty minutes ago. It should have been probably the, the end, of, the end of Act One. Yeah. And yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. Apparently, in, in a lot of these shots, she was actually hypnotized. That's why she gets. Really? The, she's able to get this glossy look and and everything like that. She said it was a, a very peculiar experience in the entire do you, thing. Do you? What What are your thoughts on hypnotism? I don't know, I've always just seen it as, as a parlor trick in a certain way. I never, and I, I never really don't know. Yeah, I I can't imagine that I mean, it's it's, I mean, it's real. It's, a, it's always a nice kind of thing in like stir of echoes. I would like right. how it's used in a film like that. And yeah, feeling like that to kind of flip a psychic switch or something in someone's head or something like that. But I don't know. How scary would it be to wake up in a pool of blood? Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus. That's the head of a Rottweiler and a butcher knife. Don't pick it Why up, you, you dumb bitch. Up? Well, maybe she thinks the killer's still out there. Well. That's fair. That's fair. And, whoa. You bitch. So the baby wasn't there? It was no, just... I guess not. Ow! No. God damn. She's concussed. Let no. her alone. Ah, Jesus! Oh. <laughs> and this is where the police come in, and she's holding the murder weapon. Yeah. What a great little sequence. Yeah. Other than the fact that it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Why, yeah. why, how, you know, Candyman used these Michael Myers-esque staging yeah. of the tableau. Yeah. You know? This has to be... Yeah. Traumatic. Very traumatic. This is... Uh, borderline uncomfortable. Yeah. And this is this the same guy that she yeah. was okay. Yeah, the same dude she was talking to earlier. That's when, what I when thought. She got assaulted, yeah. <clears throat> Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> I mean You're right. It doesn't make any sense. How yeah. did she get there? I love the meat cleaver. Yeah.
that answers that question. The baby is missing. Yeah. And she's being judged, so she yeah. is clearly not innocent until proven guilty, eh? Yeah. Well, there's some police work that we all know and love. That's Chicago right there. Right. Hit her with a phone book while you're at it. Yes. <laughs> I always love old old photographs in movies mm. where they use, you know, their actual real photographs. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm sorry. Trevor's not home right now. He's dicking around with that grad student. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. I forgot all about that part. Yeah, he's... Uh... Right. Why wouldn't you be around to, to come visit me in prison? Oh, that's right, because you were dipping the wick. <laughs> oh. Same thing he was doing in heat. Right. Just exactly. fucking around with other exactly. guys' women. Meanwhile, this handsome woman, cop there. <laughs> mm. I toured the uh, the jail in my town one one mm. time when I was younger. I don't remember what it was for, but we had mm. a, you know, we we got to like tour the. City Hall yeah. and the, the police station. Okay. And uh, they locked us in jail yeah. for, I don't know, 15 minutes or yeah. so. And, like, yeah. they were like, okay, everybody get in a cell. And they locked the door. <laughs> and and uh, even for 10 or 15 minutes, knowing I was going to get out, it was still, like, a little, uncomfortable. A little anxious. Yeah. All right. Now, oh, you got yeah. some splaining to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. It's usually what they do when they walk you into the, the station sometimes. Right, right. Depending on how famous you are. Yeah. Meanwhile, all of Cabrini Green is a lynch mob out here. <laughs> Classic Chicago uh, oh, yeah. with the checkered black and white oh, yeah, hat. Total, I love that total. look. They've got the great Chicago flag. I love the Chicago flag on the, the patch on the, the arm. That light blue and white with the, the four stars. Yeah. Oh, cheers to a cup of coffee. Yeah. This guy doesn't have enough product in his hair to be a lawyer. Anytime you see, a, see a, one of those commercials in Chicago, it's like, they got all slicked back. They got like five pounds of product up there. Like a, a lawyer that has an 800 number? Oh, right yeah, there. total. <laughs> they got plenty of those. They got billboards going on. We got a whole city full of Saul Goodmans. <laughs> He does look more like a corporate lawyer yeah. than he does a defense attorney. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. what are we getting at here? Like, All right, we, we we have no connection of what's hap what what's going on. What, what correlation is there to Candyman here? We haven't had any direct line because Candyman shows up. He says a few. Uh, cryptic things. So those a few flashes in her in her face, or whatnot, and then this weird time warp, uh, space time that we distortion don't happens. She shows up in the middle of a crime scene, and yeah, it, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like it, the the film has too much of a gradual build. That once we get to something interesting. It's going to, still going to take too long to get to a point of it. Well, even now, <clears throat> like, she's just asking him now Yeah. where he was. Like, why wasn't it immediately yeah. the first thing when he walks in the jail? Where were you? I, I've, I've been sitting here all night. Where the hell have you been? Right. Um, meanwhile, they sit and talk to the lawyer. Right. She's now taking a bath. It's been 24 hours almost. Yeah. 
Um, well, where, where's the and also like just to get to procedures like where was the arraignment? Where when did they set the bond? You don't just walk in there. Right. They don't. They don't. They don't charge her with something and just put her in the holding cell and then sometimes just picks some picks her up and goes home. You have to be arraigned. Right. There's a whole process of this thing. It takes a couple of days. She's a good looking woman though. Oh yeah, yeah. She's got a little Budweiser there. <laughs> um But okay, so at our midpoint, our non believer became a believer All right. in can so now she believes. Candyman's real. Yes. And I guess she's been thrown into this other, like, so now she has a new objective to prove her innocence? Right. Is that... This, you could take a, this kind of story and not have it be supernatural horror. This can just be another thriller of some sort where it's, it's a mistaken identity or a frame for murder type of thing. It has no need to have anything to do with Candyman. Because there's no, we've had Candyman in the scene for one minute. Right. We, we've been going now for 55 minutes, and Tony Todd has been on screen for about 90 seconds. Yeah. You know, I, everything we had in the first half of the film has no correlation to this, because everything at the school doesn't matter, the, the, the paper she's writing doesn't matter, the research she did didn't, doesn't matter, because... Now it's a completely different plot. The, the entor- Ben Franklin telling the backstory yeah. is like inconsequential. Essentially, right. doesn't doesn't aid towards anything to the, the 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 further progression of the plot later on. It doesn't come back. It's like, oh, this is something in the lore that the guy tells you that ends up leading towards to how meaning you de- meaning him something, or something, right? Yeah. No, that's not how pictures work, lady. No, no, no. If it's out of focus, it's staying out of focus. Coffee with your beer? <laughs> it's, a, it's a schizophrenic morning. I do love the bookshelves. Very 90s decor. Yeah. It's very beige. Well, the film was very beige. <laughs> she needs a beige Ford. <laughs> She's got an orange car, though. That's kind of fun. <laughs> I was like, I was looking online if anyone actually made, makes brown sedans. I don't, I don't know if they just make them as a regular line anymore. I do, well, and I've been saying a, this for years. You a special order one. You can go back and listen to all of my commentaries. So, like, this is weird. Yeah. I mean... The first time that you encountered her, you didn't. You don't think she believed in you? And why is why is Candyman negotiating yeah. when all somebody has to do is say his name five times and he shows up and slits you from yeah. I mean, he's kind of to gullet. He's he's kind of getting at a, a little little first nightmare here that you need someone to believe in him to keep existing in this supernatural state here and so I don't, I don't know why why specifically it needs to be her because there's a whole bunch of people in Cabrini Green that believe a lore, a lore of Candyman whether it's just the guy that got arrested earlier or whatever it is there are plenty of people that believe in the lore to some extent in some form why does it have to be that she has to believe for something further to to, to right? Why is she special? Progress his existence. See, it would it would still be good if he wasn't doing this stuff and it was progressing to the point of her 
changing your paper from skepticism to belief or whatnot, and that would have some kind of hook in that. But now nobody yeah, believes anything that she says. So I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm a little right. lost it, on it the concept. Actually, it actually becomes kind of dramatic irony yeah. where the characters don't know what's going on, but the audience does. Yeah. Um, so it, this has now become basically every episode of Three's Company. <laughs> Extra on that makeup, huh? Yeah. So now is the point of Candyman that he does these things and somebody else is always blamed for the murder, which then you know everyone goes, "Oh no, it really was Candyman." Yeah, it's weird. It, it just I don't know. So, I mean, she's now been framed for two murders by yes. Candyman. But, like, in the case of Ruthie Jean, nobody was framed for that. No. In the case of the... I mean, the, the sex-crazed yeah. boyfriend at the yeah. beginning, was the point of that that he was... The boyfriend was then arrested? I don't know. They didn't explain that. No. It's a nice little crime scene they got going yeah. there. Look at how sexy that Chicago flag logo looks on a black <laughs> jacket. The, uh... Do you know you know about the stars and how each of the four stars represents a huh. uh, a major uh, moment in Chicago history? Well, like Chicago Fire and what else? Uh, the the Great Chicago Fire is one. Um, the uh, the fort fort um, whatever the like military base was yeah. that that it became I know what you're became about. Chicago. I, don't know the I name. can't remember the yeah. name of it. So the the land was a, basically a big military base that became yeah. the city of Chicago. Yeah. And then um, there was also the World's Fair of 1893 is one. Okay. Um, and then the second World's Fair that happened in uh, 1935 or later on. Um, so those four items make up the four stars of the Chicago flag. Okay. So. Fun fact for all of you not from <laughs> Chicago. I can't remember the name of the fort. I'm trying to find it. Okay. You kids and your phones. <laughs> uh, fort Dearborn. Dearborn, right, because, yes. South Dearborn Street. It's hard to pinpoint where that was because we have a lot of streets that look look like that. Anyway, so yeah, Fort Dearborn, which became the city of Chicago, yeah. and then burned down with <laughs> Elsie's cow. No, the cow was Elsie. I really would give anything to go back to 1893 and visit the world's <laughs> the world's fair. Sorry, we've digressed completely. I just I love the Chicago flag. I love Chicago. <laughs> that blood doesn't look very good. Dried blood turns almost brown. Yeah. You're right. There is a a lot of correlation to Nightmare on Elm Street in yeah. this. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see it before, but yeah. now that you say it It's a lot like encountering a supernatural killer. Everyone thinks you're insane. Then you get 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 uh, taken to the hospital to try and figure out what's wrong with you. There's floating in the air. Yeah. <laughs> You have to believe in the killer. Yeah. Yeah. 
There's a lot of corollary here. Yeah. Well, at least with Elm Street, you know what Freddy's about. Whoa, that didn't even go in. Lady. No. That needle did not go in. Yeah. That was a bad take. Yeah. They shouldn't have used that take. Yeah. Yeah, at least with Elm Street, you understand what Freddy's about. He's a killer, he's a tormentor, he's terrorizing. That's the Hancock there. So, yeah. Um, depending on what angle you're at. Yeah. So it's basically yeah. due, due west yeah. of mm -hmm. the loop. And why, why do we have the baby? Like... It, it, it's, it's such a thing that everything is... Handled in such a, I don't want to say poetic. It's not quite the right word, but there, there's such a. I don't know what the word is. It's, it's handling everything in a very sort of, in a grandiose fashion, where everything is kind of like subtlety and vagueness, and, tr and it's trying to be very artistic about everything, uh, art artistic ex expression. But there, there's not enough context to understand what is happening, why it's happening. It's too abstract in a certain way. Yeah. It's like what I was getting is like, I don't know what Candyman's about. Because if you have all these other wars where it's just like, people just say the name and he shows up and kills them, okay, there's that. That makes sense. But for this one woman, he has a completely different agenda and different motivation that's very very much unspoken and it doesn't tie back to anything that Ben Franklin told us at the restaurant yeah. like if it was he had some oh, of course yeah Jew um, <laughs> he's got that flesh colored yarmulke there <laughs> um, the uh, you know if there was ah <laughs> oh, the uh, there, uh, if there had been something in that story that you know was that maybe she fit a role in yeah. his backstory that yeah. you know I don't know or maybe if there was something like something along the lines of certain something that that would correlate between the the virgin woman that he impregnated and something with her some some kind of something that would kind of link it uh, in a way. That would make it sense why he would be fixated on her in a special type of fashion. Right, but we've had no explanation. Why right. her? Right. Why that baby? Why anything? Right. I mean, with the with the first sequel, a lot of people have a very stark opinion of it. For people who like this one, the second one's just like a straight slasher film, but... I've never seen any of them other than uh, this one. Okay, because well, in the second one, they actually have it that... A lot of the main characters in the film are actually descendants from Candyman himself. They're descendants from that kitty imprint that he fathered. That's an interesting it makes, twist. It makes yeah. at least a link. Yeah. This one, like I said, this one doesn't really have... At least at this point in time doesn't explain what the purpose of all this is why the the psychological mind games why all the abstract things are occurring between everything else i mean why, is why, it why is Candyman so secretive if he wants people to believe in his lore why is letting why is he letting someone else take the blame for his murders is it like you know, oh, because she's investigating and trying Drawing to say, trying, trying to say that he's not real, and I'll show you I'm real. Right. I mean, still, he doesn't have to do this. Right. To get her to believe. But also, wouldn't he have done the same thing to our Ben Franklin guy? Yeah. Ten years ago. He didn't. He didn't. No. Bizarre. Yeah. Something doesn't add up. Yeah. Now they're talking about doing a remake. Of course they are. It's been 25 Which, years. Whatever you're going to do with it, okay, whatever. I don't know. I have no... I'm indifferent about it. Because I guess go, when we've gone into this film before, it's like... Maybe it's just pre-programming or whatnot, but regards to that, it's like it's called Candyman. You, you see the trailer, and you see this 
terror or whatnot of this character and everything. And the bees. You want you want that to be front and center of the film, and that's this is it's background dressing for the film. It's not about Candyman, really. It's about Candyman fucking around with her life. Driving her crazy and all this type of stuff and I mean and even if you go the route that he's bother he's you know going after her because she did manage to say his name five times in her, yeah. her own apartment. Yeah. But he didn't just show up and no, slice her. Clearly he she she went back, she got a text, she healed up. It's been weeks since he she she right. did that. Then he shows up. And who knows how much time occurred between when he first met her in the parking garage and she woke up at the crime scene. Right. Nobody no, knows. No. Was it an hour? Was she it blacked out? Two she days? has no no knowledge of how much time has passed in that time. And now she's going to be set up for a third murder? Yeah, and it's, it's, I mean, it's a good scene, but that doesn't mean it makes any sense. But also on this one, she's uh, she's still like tied to the chair, right? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Um, I did read that uh, for this because it's we 25th anniversary right now. They're about yeah. Um, they're doing a reunion at the convention coming up. Okay. And uh, there's a few people. I think Virginia Madsen's going to be there. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm excited about that. Um, and I believe that Tony Todd is going to be doing a photo op in makeup, in costume. in costume, with the hook and everything. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. But then again, this is one of those movies that I always just kind of was like, yeah, this is a good movie. And then when we break it down, I go, yeah. maybe I wasn't so smart on that one. The music is fun, though, this kind of church choir. Yeah, the, the, the choral stuff I like, the, the, the weird main, the main theme, uh, I don't think we've heard much of it since the opening credits, but it's kind of like this sort of, Light piano melody. It doesn't sound like a horror film. It sounds like since playing at Macy's when the guy's uh, playing the piano at okay. Christmas time or something. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the choral stuff has definitely got an ominous. Yeah. Get a little on your. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Yeah. And she's well, gonna walk in on the uh, the dicking around. Oh yeah. Oh, he's home all right, sweetheart. Somebody else is home too. <laughs> you want the door in? wide open? Why? It's all pink. All right, I, I think there's a the fact that he was working on divorcing her and then shaking up the other girl. Right. Oh. Well, now she's moved in and is taking yeah, over. Yeah. So it kind of shows even a further expansion of time that doesn't make any sense. Right. How much longer has this been? Yeah. Because from our perspective, she just got put in the hospital like a day or two ago, maybe. Right. This doesn't... They don't clean up the crime scene and do this in a day or two. Right. Rome wasn't painted in a day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well. Yeah, how... So then, even he's going to try to make her think that she's crazy?
I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you're right. There's no goddamn Candyman in this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they spend the first 40 minutes of the film building up a lore about the character to the point where we barely get any of the character in the movie. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've seen other films that have done taken their time to build up a certain character before they debut on the in the film or whatnot. That work a lot more effectively because once they do introduce them, the character is much more present in the rest of the story. Right, right. There's like a reveal. Yeah. And then it's go time. Yeah. But we've still only had six to seven minutes of screen time. Yeah. Out of the last. Yeah. You know. 86 minutes. Yeah. There's been 80 minutes of no Candyman. Yeah. Se 75 minutes. Oh, se 70, 70 minutes of no Candyman. Hour and a quarter. <laughs> ah, the, the, I think those were the financial pages, the stock quotes. <laughs> I remember as a kid looking at the stock quotes and thinking, like, this is the coolest thing. I don't know what any of these numbers are, <laughs> but I love it. And to think that you had to wait until the next day to find out oh. like what your stock did the day before. If you told people to do that today, they'd be freaking out for 24 hours, man. Like they, they, they're on they're on their fucking phone checking where app they've got. I've every I've two minutes. I've looked at my stocks twice today already. <laughs> I mean, and twice is not a lot. Yeah. I don't think. On your phone with your stockbroker, what the fuck's going on? That's right. Flip open your giant <laughs> Chicago Sun Times. Oh, oh yeah. Coca Cola is down today. <laughs> oh, Lakeshore. I love the organ. All right, where's she at? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's right on the river. Right on the river, Randolph, Rand Randolph Street Bridge. Sure. Yeah. She was looking That's west. Little, yeah, that one's a little closer to the the lake. Trump Tower will be built somewhere back there. I was gonna someday. say Trump, Trump Tower is like right. Yeah. Will be right there. Yeah. Can't quite see the the Marina Towers at all. Well, the Marina the, Marina yeah. City's on Dearborn. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, love, right the, I love those towers. They right, look beautiful. Right, right by the House of Blues. Cyndrical towers with the. The scallop the par parking garage that yeah. goes down. Scallop shape. Yeah. yeah. Really beautiful. I mean, Cabrini Green. <laughs> R.I.P. You're going in there a third time? <laughs> How does nobody just stop this woman from walking in? Yeah. And we still don't really know as an audience if this is like, does Candyman live here in Cabrini Green? Yeah. Does this apartment just belong to that other guy? I mean, from the, from the story our uh, Brit dude told us and everything. It's like oh, that he um, did move. Yeah, it, it did take place in these grounds. The, the 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 origin of the character happened in this area. That's right. There was just a beehive right. nearby. Yeah, that <laughs> stung him to death. Yeah. There's no doorway. There was only holes in the wall. Can't even light his candles. Why are you just gonna pick shit up? <laughs> Put your fingerprints all over a hook when you know a hook is the murder <laughs> weapon. Yeah. That's three times now you've done this. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> I don't understand this geography. Yeah. So, Candyman's able to teleport. You don't have to worry about all this shit. 
That's true. That's true. <laughs> he's, he's the one slasher you kind of get to. In the real world, he can actually teleport. But like Jason and Michael just randomly show up wherever right. the hell they want they to. They can just be conveniently, <laughs> conveniently located. And now what? We're in an apartment that's been abandoned for yeah. how long? And there's just pictorials of... The, the story we got told to us 45 minutes ago. Right. God, it feels like two hours ago. <laughs> That's not a rusty blade. That guy didn't tell it right. <laughs> He's taking a snooze. Well, Candyman's got to sleep too. <laughs> Where is she? Is this another apartment? Why does it look like this? Why does it look like an abandoned warehouse now? Nothing makes sense. <laughs> Why did I ever like this movie? I always actually didn't care for the ending. Mm. Like the ending ruined the movie for me as like the, a kid. the hook at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you think you're going to do with that. That. Oh, yeah. This new supernatural being you know, who flies out windows and appears out of thin air. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can gonna... see you can see the cables when he flew out the boat. I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Who cares? So he's implying that he's holding the kid uh, hostage to lure her in for what purpose? To make her... Is she even uh, here because of the kid? I don't think so. No. She's here to figure out what the fuck is going on. So are we. We don't have a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of forgot about the kid. Yeah. The kid's inconsequential to the rest of the film, aside from the fact that uh, it get, gets her arrested at the beginning of the whole thing. What did they charge her with originally? She murder. Did, of the dog? Do you get charged for murder of dogs? I don't know. I mean, not, not that I'm disputing oh, that I you guess, should. I guess maybe it was assault, because she oh, attacked her with the, yeah. the meat cleaver. Yeah. Attempted murder? Attempted murder, I guess. Again, unclear. Unclear. Again, it's like, not that I... I definitely advocate that anyone's going to butcher an animal. Yeah. A butchered, butchered dog should have serious things levied against them in the court of law and everything. Um, and these are real bees. Yeah. On real actors. Wouldn't be a fan of that. More power to them. I don't know how you guarantee you're not going to get stung to live in hell by them. I don't think there is a guarantee. <laughs> this kid looks like a year older than he did <laughs> in that first scene. Well, we don't know how much time is actually passed in this movie. We've he might that. be. He might it be might a be a year. <laughs> might have been a year. He jumping the timeline on us. <laughs> sure, that's what she was doing in between takes. Oh, I guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> Again with the hooks. Like, is it a meat hook? I guess. What what other uses for a hook are there? Like where why would you have a, a hook, hook like that? Yeah, I don't know. Other than maybe like at a butcher shop. A barrel of hay, but you're not gonna find that in Chicago. No. It was always you, Helen. What was? Maybe at some point here we're going to figure out what the... 
what the, the connection is. Yeah. But as you say, no new evidence in the, in the <laughs> final argument. Right. Yeah, you can't introduce it's, new evidence in your closing too, argument. It's too late in the game. That's not a very good uh, piece of artwork there to make that much of a connection. Yeah. It, it kind of looks like her, but it's like, you need to put a little more effort in that painting. Man. Right. All this other artwork is looks like you spent time on it. That one didn't. That looks like 20, 20 women's going to walk down the street, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, this is the last five minutes of the movie. You, you don't get to pull that stuff. That stuff you, you, you introduce in, like, the first half an hour while you're looking through... That could have been a good midpoint. Right, that would have been a good midpoint. If you're looking through old archives and you find... Some old painting or whatnot, an old photograph. What would, would have photographs at that time, 1890s? You find an old photograph of this woman, and you realize that looks a lot like her. That's why he's fixated on her. That would give more context to the rest of the picture. I don't remember what the context was of the woman in the story, though. Well, because, well, he was hired, he was a paint. he ended up being a painter, very good artist, and he was hired to, what are, over dramatic Brit guy was saying, capture the the virginal beauty of the guy's daughter, and then ends up sleeping with the woman and impregnating her. Okay. So apparently, what they're implying is that that woman that he was hired to the paint the picture of and impregnated looks like Helen Lyle. That's the best I can give you. Which is why he then stole a baby. I don't know why he sold the damn baby. <laughs> and she's just climbing through this heap of trash. Feels like a very overly orchestrated plot here. This Chicago bonfire right here oh, is what yeah. this is. why they're deciding to burn this mountain of shit. <laughs> well, you know, it's Saturday night. That's what you do. I guess. I saw the hook. Well, they saw her with a hook. Right? Because didn't she have it? We are things in the, this pile of trash probably looks like a hook anyway. You think Candyman's in there because you think you saw something. Nah. I mean, the performances are all good. The actors are really good. I just like... I, I, I mean, I understand what it is now, but I spent too much of the film not understanding what the narrative push of the film was moving towards. Right. And only to have them deliver it an hour and a half in? Yeah. Four minutes before you roll credits. And, and I mean, it, and is it like Candyman's assertion that maybe she's a reincarnation of the same woman? Because there's there's no cor there's no implication of that in the whole thing. He's at he's almost acting like he's delusional in a certain way, despite the fact that he's, that the character of Candyman does seem very coherent in, in what he's doing and everything's going on. He's acting like this is this is the same woman reincarnated, it's the same soul or something like that. Right, and then the baby is the baby that they fathered oh. together. It, it, it took us the whole movie to figure that out. We shouldn't have taken the whole movie to figure that out. Yeah, no. that's... Meanwhile, her ass is on fire right yeah. now. Getting, that's a that, stunt guy in a wig. <laughs> Look at that fucking wig. That is a stunt man and, uh, uh, in a wig. We got, we're building up a cache of wigs in this whole commentary stuff. We've got a, a couple from Jane, Jamie Lee Curtis. We've got a little Lisa Wilcox. This one, this one feels like it was the worst. Now that's Horace Pinker right there. Yeah, Horace Pinker <laughs> there. You don't need a wig. Like she might not live. Right. After that burn. Yeah. 
She'll never grow hair again. No. And those are, what, bees? No. Yeah, I guess so. Those are... It's a bad optical shot, I think. At least on this DVD, it probably looks better on the Blu-ray, hopefully. The optical shot didn't look too convincing. I don't think he's convinced. Yeah. It's also one of those things like, don't really have... We, we, we didn't establish enough rules to be able to understand that this is what it takes to kill Candyman. Just right. burn him. I still don't know if he's a real person. Right. This is the whole part that you didn't feel works. And I don't I don't think it really I don't think it's necessary. I don't know if this was in the original script, in the original story. This feels tacked on like hell. Yeah. You could have just rolled credits right now already. There's no purpose to really have to put this into the film. Well, you gotta have that coda the, the at the sting, end. The yeah. stinger nonsense, yeah, that's... There's good ways and better ways to do it, like with, with anything in film. There's, there, You can take a trope and do it very well, or you can do it very kind of... eh, kind of underwhelming. Or you can do it cheesy, you can do it any type of way, but... In the case, case of all, all the math that we, we talk about with screenplay structure and whatnot, it's like we, we've already gotten to the, we, we, we've hit that point like well, we kind of like talk like Charles Play 2 or whatnot we hit that point in the climax where think okay you've got, got this amount of time to be able to wrap it up after this and now it feels like it's dragging on okay now we've cut to a brand new scene on a brand new day what does this have to do with anything? Now we have to meander around for another minute or two to figure out what the purpose is. It's, and so she was the hero of Cabrini Green. Yeah. And little Webster here in his bow tie <laughs> is going to... Webster was uh, set in Chicago, wasn't it? Uh, you know what? I'm not 100% on that. <sighs> Been a long time. Throw the baby in. Why not? No. Don't throw the baby in. Xander. That's a good name. Xander. He's a good actor, man. He's a solid character actor. He's been working forever, man. She's got some color in this place, yeah. <laughs> she might not be wearing a bra. She's oh, definitely no. not. She's, right, she's uh, poking out everywhere. Oh, natural. <laughs> she's lounging around the house in that. There you go. Just smashed up the, the artwork on the wall. Raw steak? Is that what that was? <laughs> Hair dryer hanging from the wall like a goddamn hotel room. <laughs> yeah, here's that theme I was talking about. Oh, this is why we had that scene. So that he could recall it at the end. Oh, jeez. She's got a good tip. Yeah. What 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 are you angry about right now? <laughs> Throwing meat around like a <laughs> savage. <laughs> and now what? Now you regret your life? <laughs> Jeez. You think I was sleeping around cheating on her before she ever did anything? And what is to make him think that saying her name I don't know. I don't creates a, the folklore of... Right. I don't know if it's just... I feel like in execution, they feel like they're trying to half doing it, half not. Like he's just saying her name over and over again as, as just a, 
a grief response, and then it also seems somewhat like there's an intention behind there it. There was definitely intention because he turned yeah. the light off and yeah. got sinister looking at it. And he never inquired about what what the lore was. He wasn't. Well, he was. He was. Well, doing, he, he was doing he was the, the, a class. The, the lecture and everything, but I don't know. Again, more stuff that doesn't have. Yeah. And now we have to do yet even more epilogue, I guess. Yeah. Well, now we're rolling credits, yeah. but... Huh. Baby Anthony, played by two girls. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. I don't know. So now if you can say Helen five times and yeah, bald, burnt, bald woman <laughs> gets you with a candy man's hook because she was buried with it. Yeah. I mean, again, it's... it's and now they're together forever. Would... would which, again, doesn't... With no baby. It, yeah, there's no baby. It, it, the concepts for me are introduced too late to have enough stuff to build up to make any sense. Because you don't have... Again, like you said, if you had a lot of these revelations at the halfway point, you'd have time for the characters to... for it to affect the story in some way. For the for the characters to have some effect. Uh, something or another. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. one of those things like... If you introduce things so late in the film, there's no time for the audience to grasp onto it. There's no time for the characters to grapple with it. There's no time for it to metastasize in the story to have anything really kind of come out of it. I mean, I I, I don't I don't know. Philip Fisky Stone the <laughs> Third. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we we as we kind of just said throughout the the film, it, everything was a half hour late. Yeah. In developing. The, 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 the ideas are structured in the wrong places in the story. Because that's the problem of when you have a square who knows exactly what they're writing, but they don't want to inform the audience. Right. Because you're writing stuff and you understand what you're writing. But you're 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 gonna yeah, they're you're not gonna, you're, you're gonna, not looking at it. You're gonna string the the audience along because you think you got them hooked into a again not a pun and whatnot, but you've got them caught up in a, in an intrigue. You think you've got them caught up in an intrigue, a web of mystery, stuff like that. But it's based it's biased based on the right. screenwriter's own knowledge of what's going to happen. Right. He's not looking at it from the point of view yeah. of a, of an, a third party. Yeah, and, I, and I've seen, I've critiqued stuff in the past where it's like, had that same type of thing. It's like, uh, a screenwriter has to be able to turn their perspective towards the outside looking in to understand how the concepts work. I like that title design. <laughs> Heart times coffee equals lightning bolt? Darn right. <laughs> So it's, it's just like there's there's good you got a great cast you got some great imagery in it. I was gonna say the visuals are are solid. Yeah, but I I can't get cooked, hooked in the story because it takes too long for it to explain itself because it's trying to be too artistic expression like I said too too abstract in its ideas where you have all this stuff happening with Helen that's psychological mind games but you're warping space and time for it to show up in different places and losing hours or days or weeks of the story and you don't understand anything more than what she does and what's going on and she doesn't find out jack shit until like the last five minutes of the damn film and she never published her study no ultimately has next has, ultimately that has nothing to do with the whole film because obviously by as we see retrospect here Candyman's entire obsession about her has nothing to do with that element of the story. How did he know who she was, though, prior to her investigating him? He doesn't come looking for her until she says the five 
says it five times in the mirror, then takes and then coincidentally four weeks says, to oh, show up. Oh, you look like that bitch that I married yeah, 150 it, years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just it doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up, in my opinion. It doesn't. I, mean, I like lot, it less of, and less every time I watch it. Yeah, it's like a lot. A lot of people view it as a classic for their own purposes. If they, they something they find in really hooks them, that's fine. But I just, it's like every time I've I've tried to like this film over the years. That's why I have a special edition DVD. I bought the thing years ago, and I've tried to wrap myself around and just something just never caught on with me about it and i sure. think i've kind of figured out that it's just that it takes it, analyzing like just as right. a as a watcher you're like oh okay 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 it, it's but then once we really break it down right and you get two people really fired up about yeah nitpicking the shit yeah. out of it i mean you can tell it's a clive barker thing because it has a lot of his style of uh theatrical dialogue or whatnot sure it's, it's very sort of and the artsy Art, very artsy kind of because uh, uh, he's a painter too and everything so he has very much that type of sensibility of uh, being able to paint a, a paint a picture or whatnot with words and everything like mm -hmm. that so yeah is Sam is on this I just feel like you're building up candy man there's not much candy man in the film the, the the ideas in the film don't come together until it's extremely too late in the film for it to, to connect with the audience to inform them what's right, going on. Right, half of them left already. Right. Your, your brain, if if you're introducing stuff way late after people have already kind of checked out, sorry, you, you, you failed as a screenwriter in terms of structure and just conveying your ideas to an audience. Right. All right, well. We're probably, we're probably going to get a little pushback on this one. As that's we've fine. Had, ahead in times, but I mean, I mean, we we didn't like tear it apart like some things. Like it has, if you restructured things, it'd be a really good film. If you if if you put put the if you got the pacing a little bit more tighter, you put the you revealed the ideas and the the turns and the plot, and better more advantageous points in the story, you'd have a much stronger film, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's almost, it's rough draft-ish. Yeah, yeah, so. Like I said, they're, they're doing a remake thing, we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be great. Like Leave said, us some comments, yeah. tell us what you think. Yeah, so. We love to read the comments. Yeah, so. Well, we're just here for a discussion, guys. Let us know what you feel, so. Throw Thanks it, for listening. Throw it at us. If we miss something in the film, throw it at us. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it, so. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.